Hello, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at St Mary's Halesworth, 8 o'clock on Thursday the 28th of October, the Festival of Simon and Jude Apostles. I'll be reading something about them later from the Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. Otherwise, the words are the Church of England's Common Worship, which are available online at the Church's website, a Remus Daily Prayer, offline in the book. Um, common Worship Daily Prayer. <clears throat> morning prayer on Thursday in ordinary time is towards the beginning after prayer during the day. And one can download it for, um, uh, for apps and use that those offline for a small surcharge. Welcome, whether you're joining us on <coughs> our live stream on uh, the Blythe Valley Church's uh, Facebook page. You can find details there for um, our Zoom meeting, which I establish each time, uh, although it's having a bit of a job starting up today. We were delayed as Facebook was having a bit of a job too, but we'll keep that ticking over to see if we can bring that up. I'm also uh, here in person, 8 and 6, uh, most days, just not Monday, and uh, I put the audio up on YouTube, and uh, that will go up uh, in a short while presently uh, on my YouTube channel, Dominic Doble. So welcome, however you are joining us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. To the song of God's blessing, God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. <clears throat> then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So to the Psalms, those appointed this morning are numbers 116 and 117. <clears throat> Hardly worth turning up 117. God bless it, it's only two verses. But uh, we open and close each with the refrain as provided. We say the glory be after the last verse. I'll read straight through. If anybody had joined us in a way that we could all hear, they would read the evens, so you're welcome to just read the evens or the whole psalm. We also say the refrain to open and close, and the glory be, as I said, after the last verse before we return to it. And uh, we keep silence for people to read the prayers that follow each psalm, if they find them helpful. Psalms 116 and 117 at the back of the book, or scrolling on if you're using an app or you're following online. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. The snares of death encompassed me, the pains of hell took hold of me, by grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon <coughs> the name of the Lord, O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous, our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the simple, I was brought very low and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. 
I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. Alleluia. I praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of, of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Alleluia. So scrolling past our first reading online and the link to the one we'll be using, Isaiah, to the canticle. <coughs> it doesn't have a title presented to us electronically because uh, it's one specific for today. So if you're following in the book, you'll need to look up today's date. I'm reminding myself of that straight away, 28th of October, Simon and Jude. If you're following in the book, look up the 28th of October, half to two thirds of the way through amongst the saints' days and festivals. And you'll find direction there for the... Um, Canticle and the other options that we'll be using during the service. Online is provided for us. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, <coughs> to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. <coughs> they shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me, and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. From Celebrating the Saints, Kindle Edition. Simon and Jude were named among the twelve apostles in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Simon is called the Zealot, probably because he belongs to a nationalist resistance movement opposing the Roman occupation of forces. There is no indication in the Gospels whether Simon moved from the Zealot party to be a follower of Christ or, on the other hand, if after the resurrection he became a supporter of that group, seeing it as a response to God's call to proclaim the kingdom. Luke describes Jude as the son of James, <coughs> while the letter of Jude has him as the brother of James, neither of which negates the other. It seems he was the same person as Thaddeus, which may have been a last name. Owing to the similarity of his name to that of Judas Iscariot, Jude was rarely invoked in prayer, and it seems likely that because of this, interceding through him was seen as a final resort when all else failed. He became known, therefore, as the patron saint of lost causes. The two apostles are joined together on the 28th of October because a church which had recently acquired their relics was dedicated to their memory in Rome on this day in the 7th century. So to Isaiah 45, if you're following online, <clears throat> there's a link at the bottom of the apocryphal reading that is provided by default. And as most people probably don't have apocrypha either distributed through the Bible, as you would find in the Jerusalem Bible, <coughs> or as a separate block of text between the Hebrew Scriptures and the Second Covenant, or the Greek Scripture, um, we tend to just refer to the Hebrew Scriptures. So Isaiah 45, do look it up if you need to, it's a major prophet, about halfway through the book, if you've got a standard Old and New Testament. <coughs> it's a major prophet, so if you flick through, you should find it. 
chapter number 45, so that's large number at the head of the paragraph, and then small numbers in the text are the verses 18 to 26. Isaiah 45 from 18. Online there's a link under the apocryphal reading provided, which should take you through to the Aremus Bible browser version. Otherwise you can search for it or open the Bible app. Isaiah 45 from 18, NRSV. For thus says the Lord who created the heavens, he is God, who formed the earth and made it. He established it. He did not create it a chaos. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no other. I did not speak in secret in a land of darkness. I did not say to the offspring of Jacob, seek me in chaos. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. Assemble yourselves and come together. Draw near, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge, those who carry about their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. <coughs> declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a saviour. There is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. <coughs> All who are incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord, all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. So this excerpt from Isaiah, about the middle of the book, it's in three parts, is the book of Isaiah, before, during and after exile. One, a warning to get with God to avoid disaster. One, while they are in exile, to keep them on track with God, that God may bring them back <coughs> to maintain their ethnicity and their religious practices while they're in that multicultural, multi-faith place of exile. And the last third is the restoration and uh, encouraging them, exhorting God's people to have faith in the rebuilding of their people, their ethnicity, their country, their religion. And this is halfway through. So it talks of God as being the one that created the heavens, not one of these wooden um, gods made by human hands <clears throat> and uh, God's world is made orderly ordered which is why I guess science can work to try and find out how that ordering works the instruction therefore recognizing that God is the creator God assemble yourselves all the nations and uh, declare your case <coughs> before the one true God those who carry their wooden idols you see there's that comparison between the true God that creates and those who carry wooden idols and uh, the prophets are encouraging them in a mocking kind of way I guess to make their case why their wooden idols are so much better than the true God that made all things and made them in order and there it is there is no other God besides me turn to me the true God and be saved before me every knee shall bow <coughs> only in me the prophets Isaiah say, <coughs> only in the true God may be found righteousness and strength. In the Lord, that is the true God, all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory, which includes us if we see ourselves as understanding Jesus as the truth, the way, the light, as a child of the Hebrew people. In him we have our triumph and our glory. Let us not trust in those things that we have established in our own strength. <clears throat> Let us trust in that otherness that is awesome, over and above all, immortal, invisible, cannot be grasped, and yet is present in us by the Spirit, <coughs> and uh, made available to our ken through the incarnate Jesus. Luke 6 from 12 is our second reading. This is in the Gospels, in the Second Covenant, the Greek Scripture. If you're following in a book, the Bible, two-thirds of the way through, you'll find the New Testament, as it's often called, opening with Matthew, then Mark, then Luke. The Gospel of Luke, or Good News of Luke. Again, the large number six at the head of the paragraph is the chapter number, small numbers in the text, 12 to 16. 
Now, during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when they came, he called his disciples and chose twelve of them, whom he also named apostles. Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. <coughs> and so here we see, as we read earlier in the Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints, that they, uh, Simon and Jude are listed <coughs> in this um, list of the apostles in Luke. And uh, it's made clear that this isn't Simon Peter, this is Simon the Zealot. <coughs> Our excerpt said that uh, he was called a zealot um, because he was probably a nationalist, but he also needed to be made... Uh, rendered distinct from Simon Peter. So this list calls Simon Peter, Simon whom he named Peter, and Simon, he was called the Zealot. Obviously a popular name in those days. And then we have the two Judases, and this translation actually has the name um, Jude as Judas. And so we have Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. <coughs> and uh, there they are in that list. And we thank God for them. And although it's potentially slightly tongue-in-cheek that uh, poor Judas, son of James, is the uh, patron saint of last resorts, <coughs> nevertheless, we may be encouraged if we feel that we are low down the pecking order, if we are irrelevant, if we are excluded, if we're overlooked, <coughs> then actually we are listed in God's list of favoured and names on whom his favour rests. And we have our place, and people will be grateful for our example, our understanding, the people we are. We may not realise it, we may not know it, and uh, we may not be some of those sort of um, on stage, up at the front, noisy, brash, publicised, attractive, successful people. But we are there, and we make up that list. We make up that 12, and in the Gospels, they're regularly referred to as the 12, to endorse the books as there are those 12 witnesses. So be encouraged. To the responsory back in morning prayer on Thursday in ordinary time, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. To the song of Zechariah. The refrain is uh, common to the apostles again, I think, so if you're following the book, you might need to look that up <coughs> or just join in it. Blessed be the Lord. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that shall last. Let us pray. Source, Son, Essence, one in three, three in one. We thank you for bringing us to the beginning of this day. <clears throat> we thank you for numbering us amongst the elect, your chosen, for giving us that calling to serve. We thank you that our God is a creator God, 
and a God of order, of strength, of power, of righteousness. And we thank you that as you dwell in us, we will be people with those same characteristics of goodness, of kindness, of influence. And we pray that you will enable, inspire, fulfil your will, your word for us, in and through us, that your rule may come. <clears throat> World Prayer News feed on my Prayer Mate app today is uh, in relation to Greece. Wildfires are raging in Greece. They write, forcing thousands to evacuate in one of its worst heat waves in decades. Let us pray for those affected and for the ECM workers and ministries there. I'm not sure whether that still pertains or whether that's uh, an old news item that's been resurrected. Nevertheless, we pray for the aftermath of those wildfires from the summer, if that is the case. <coughs> we pray for healing and restoration. From Christian Action Research and Education, we pray for children and adults affected by poor mental health, particularly in the wake of the pandemic, who need professional care. We pray that uh, many will not only turn to you, well, will turn to you, I see, and uh, learn to live in the freedom of your forgiveness and love. <clears throat> so we pray that faith may attend their assistance from counselling to uh, learn to cope with the trauma that they have experienced as a result of loss and change in their lives. Pray that communities will gather around those who are broken and hurting and support them. From Green Christian. Just uh, looking up the Thursday entry. <clears throat> Large cruise ships were banned from entering the Venice Lagoon in August and have been since. The Italian government, uh, by the Italian government, it follows years of warnings they risk causing irreparable, dam irreparable damage to the ecosystem. <clears throat> The decree represents an important step for the protection of the Venetian lagoon system, said the Prime Minister. Capital of northern Italy's Veneto region, Venice is built on more than 100 small islands in a lagoon in the Adriatic. Environmental activists say giant ships generate large waves that wreck Venice's foundations and cause severe damage to the lagoon's ecosystem. <coughs> These large ships even when they were just moored in them, the Weymouth Bay caused tremendous damage to the seabed and uh, they are um, <coughs> damaging vessels. They need to be uh, managed, used with wisdom and discretion and uh, we pray that the tourism industry in Venice does not suffer unduly as a result of that decision. Ways and means are found of uh, keeping everybody um, productive and uh, the environment safe and secure and uh, people employed in jobs in the cruise ship industry. We pray that those in that industry will have wisdom on how they fulfil their responsibilities <coughs> towards creation. <coughs> in our benefit cycle we pray for food producers and those who retail it uh, in the big shops and the small local ones and also those who make available food available to people who are not otherwise able to afford it for now, through no fault of their own in our community, Larder and Food Bank. We pray that uh, difficulties of budgeting, of planning related to Brexit, COVID, um, driver shortages, petrol shortages and any other issues and concerns <coughs> will be, uh, farmers will be able to address those, uh, retailers, managers, people at all levels that we as consumers will recognise our responsibility to be prepared as we are able to pay a little bit more, that people may have a living wage, that um, people don't need to um, farm so destructively, <coughs> but can um, engage in regenerative farming and uh, fair trade practices. We pray for those who labour and certify. We pray that we recognise animal welfare, uh, issues related to food prices, <coughs> that we will all play a part as community. We thank you for our people. <coughs> Praying today for Veronica, Jeffrey, Nick, uh, Fred, Malcolm and Janet as they look after the churches in our St Andrew group. We pray too for the other um, p 
PCC officers, PCC members, electoral roll, congregations, and wider community members, at St Mary's, Chediston, St Andrew, Wissett, St Peter Speckshall, St Margaret, Linstead. We pray they will be encouraged as they see you working through them. We've got the electoral roll names for Wiston Spexel, Claire Edward Henry, Margaret Anne David, Jennifer Valerie Adana, Susan Helena Eve, Jean Hugh, Richard Kathleen Thomas, Anne, Ron Betty, Beryl Beryl, Carolyn, Karen Barbara, Mellish and Roxanne, Patricia David, Janet, Elizabeth, Craig Owen, Burke, Francis and Keith. Sheila, I Angela, Irene, Cecilia, Margaret, Derek, Pauline, and Heather. <coughs> we pray that they will know you as their protector, their peace, their joy, their hope, their sustenance. My Corona cycle, we pray for those in uh, schools, charities, businesses, as they seek to continue to offer their goods, job services, aims, aspirations in the face of uh, COVID and other challenges. We thank God for the pear tree Trust here, <coughs> we remember our GP surgery, our hospitals, our hospices, other charities. We pray that schools will be able to balance the need to maintain some sort of freedom and normality to help young people learn to live in community and to learn to learn and to be at ease in themselves and to speak up for their needs and wants, <coughs> to control and contain their emotions <clears throat> and enable them to communicate and uh, to advocate for those things that concern them whilst also keeping them safe and their communities safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Shemfishiriyaramazmafanosokarebeliyafishmesana <laughs> Almighty Almighty God, who built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as the chief cornerstone, so join us together in unity of spirit by their doctrine that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube and 